Amen. Thank you, Susan. Welcome, everyone, to this... Wait a minute. We can do better than that. Welcome, everyone. (laughs) It's a good morning, and it is Bring a Friend Sunday, and I can see some evidence of that out there. Thanks to so many of you who have brought uh, your your friends and uh, invited them to worship with us today. Um, Our church's mission is to follow Jesus and to share him with others And we desire to have a culture here of spiritual growth, of of gathering for authentic worship, of of growing together through Sunday school groups and and Bible study classes. We want as many as possible within the life of our congregation to be part of a small group that is studying the Word of God and praying together and encouraging one another. Uh, We seek to give of our time and talents for the sake of God's purposes. And then we, we, we leave this place, we go to share the love and the good news of Christ with others. And that is a cycle of gathering, growing, giving, and going that we would like to establish here to help us continue becoming stronger and stronger followers of Jesus. Uh, We have several important announcements we'd like to call to your attention today. Uh, First of all, we would like to extend some Christian sympathy to Ashley Hamilton and her family in the death of her grandmother, Miss Doris uh, Lee White Bridges. Earlier this month, uh, we we lift Ashley and her family up in our prayers. Uh, We also want to remind everyone of the grief support group that has really taken off this has become a, 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 a very solid group, and we're, we're so thankful for what the Lord is doing through this group. And it's for anybody that, that might, be a, might want to be a part of it. Uh, you don't even have to be a, a member of our church. If, if you believe that a, a grief support group would, would benefit you or, or, or someone that you're close to, uh, come or, or invite them and, and, and tell them about it. Uh, you can even accompany them if you think it would help them to get integrated into the, the life of that group. But it is a wonderful group, and we're so pleased with, with how it's going. <clears throat> Our New Testament Bible reading uh, challenge this year, we're trying to read one chapter of the New Testament each weekday, Monday through Friday. This week, we're in the book of 1 Timothy, chapters 1 through 5. Uh, if you're not quite on pace, that's okay. Even if you finish a little late, that's okay. The important thing is that we go on a regular basis to God's Word to let it speak to us and feed us and, and strengthen us and equip us to be God's people. God is at work and his word is living and active. And we're going to give away uh, some Bibles to our our third graders and our our three-year-olds today. And I'm very thankful to be able to do that. Uh, We we can never underestimate the the power of, of what God's word can do in our lives if we go to it on a regular basis. Many of you know that our church is, uh, has entered into a discernment process about the, the, the future of the life of our church as it relates to the United Methodist denomination. We had our first congregational gathering last week, and it went very well. I, I was very pleased with uh, the presentation, but also pleased with the attendance and the questions that followed. Uh, the schedule for our additional meetings is printed there before you, and these are some very important meetings that we encourage all of our church family uh, to, to be a part of because this is one of the most important decisions that, that our church will, will have to make in the, in the, the, the recent years. So, um, so, so, so please make, make, make that a priority of, of being part of these meetings. And also, um, the, the vote that will eventually be before the congregation at our congregational meeting after the first of the year is only available to um, full professing members of the church. And if you have a question about your membership status and you're, you would like to, to vote, please call the church office and check on that. They can easily verify that for you um, because the, the vote is only for full professing members of our congregation. Some of us have been here so long we're not sure, and so we might need to double check. So uh, don't, don't, don't hesitate to do that. Also, I would like to invite the, the men of the congregation this coming Saturday down to Surfside United Methodist Church, uh, the, the, the church where I started my ministry as an associate minister. We're having a, a men's one-day retreat, a, a spiritual retreat for the day um, in, at, at their uh, facility, and several of us ministers in the area are going to be sharing some uh, helpful things about uh, the Christian life and our Keynote speaker will be our new district superintendent, Reverend Stephen Brown. So if you'd like to, to go to that, there's, there's um, information in the bulletin. Um, looking through our, our bulletin, I can't mention all of our announcements, but we want to remind our, our youth group that you're meeting tonight at 515 at the North Campus. Derek's prepared for you to come and wants you all to come and have a, a wonderful time. And 
learn something special uh, about, the, about God's Word and, and, and Jesus tonight. And also, uh, you have found the service and gifts surveys. We formally call this time and talents inventory. This is for you to communicate with with the pastors and the nominations committee about where in the life of the church that you would like to serve. Um, I know coming out of the pandemic, we're still somewhat recovering from that. Our, our committees, uh, in a large way, weren't able to meet. And uh, so the, the church has become a little bit uh, more dependent on the, the pastors and the staff. And we're wanting to give some of that blessing and some of that work back to the committees to multiply ministry and to get more people involved in, in the body of Christ as, as our church moves forward in mission and ministry. And, and so there's a lot of opportunities to serve one of the um, new things we want to start is a hospitality program, really an expansion of our ushers and greeters program. We would love to put some people in the parking lots, you know, before and, and uh, before Sunday school and before worship services. We would like to create welcome centers, you know, for visitors and, and new folks when they when they come to the church if they have questions or need to know where our Sunday school class is or uh, need any information about the church. Um, I think those, uh, the, the start of, of that ministry would be something very helpful, and, and we, we need lots of people to be a part of things like that. But there's all sorts of other opportunities, uh, both on Sunday mornings and, and through committees, to serve God's purposes through this church. So please take a few moments, read the instructions, and, and fill it out. You can leave it here at the church. Um, there's also a, 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 an online version of this that you can access uh, on your computer or mobile device that you can fill out and uh, submit it that way. But it would greatly help our nominations committee as we are praying and discerning about who to invite to serve in, in various roles in the life of our church. And if, um, if, 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 if we do a good job at this and, and build a, a solid, working, functioning structure, then that can open the gates for our church to grow and thrive in ways that we used to. And, and so many of you remember that, but it, but it takes all of us. It, it takes saying yes, even if you're a little hesitant. It, takes, it may take reor, reorganizing some priorities, but if we keep doing what we've been doing recently, we're going to keep getting similar results, but if we do some things different, if more of us step up, if more of us truly uh, give our heart and, and soul to the Lord and, and desire to serve his purposes, then the sky is, is the limit for what God can do through the life of our church. So please take this seriously and, and fill it out and, and submit it, and uh, we are excited about what the Lord is up to uh, within our church family. So I've, I've said a whole bunch. I'm going to invite you to read the rest of the, of the announcements uh, on, on your own. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, our, to our guests, the, uh, the, the friends that have come to join us today, we have a special table to my right, your left over here in the south wing. Uh, there's a table with some gifts for you. And if you'd like to go by after the service and uh, re, re, uh, pick up one of those gifts, we would love for you to do that. Pastor Jim's going to be over there and some others uh, at the table to, to host that. Uh, but, but please... Please don't forget that. And also, if you, if you have time, stay for a cookout on the front lawn. We have some great weather today, and there's going to be some great food and fellowship out there. So uh, please um, make a, a morning of it, if you will. And now let us briefly stand and welcome one another as we pass the peace and love of Christ. invite you to take a hymn book and turn to hymn 577, God of Grace and God of Glory.
it, please join me in the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Carl has our scripture reading from Psalm 3 this morning. Pam? Our reading this morning is Psalm 3, and to put this in context, this is a psalm of David, and he is in the process of fleeing from his son Absalom. O Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying to me, there is no help for you in God. But you, O Lord, are my shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I'm not afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord. Deliver me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. May your blessings be on your people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're going to do something uh, probably a little bit different than what we are normally doing, but I give you a, an invitation. The choir loft has holes. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have you join us. Our soloist this morning is Miss Kim Alexander. Thank you. 
Amen. How do you follow that? <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> Um, as we come to this time of prayer, I want to remind those who are regulars and those who are new that during the prayer, we will, I will come to a point where I will say, Lord, we lift these requests up to you. And it's a time for you to lift the requests that are upon your heart to our Lord. He's aware of the details. A, a name would be sufficient. But it's a time for you to express what's on your heart. Let us pray. Merciful and mighty Lord, we gather in this house of worship to praise you. Some of us haven't spoken to you since last Sunday, while others haven't stopped speaking to you since their eyes opened this morning. Help us, allow us to listen. To hear your whisper in the clamor of life, allow us to pause, allow us to wait upon you. Lord, protect us in this world from physical storms, from hurricanes and tropical depressions, floods and thunder, but also, Lord, Protect us from the storms of life, such as health, addictions, sinfulness, jealousy, envy, anger. The list goes on. Lord, these weigh upon our heart and they drive fear in us, causing us to worry over an endless list of things that really don't matter. Be with us, Lord, when we are tempted to worry. Allow us to trust in you. Not just lip service, but a deep abiding faith that you are in control and you are on the throne of the universe. Lord, there are so many things that weigh upon us. As we lift these requests up to you, Lord, address them as only you can in your perfect will. How sweet are the prayers of your servants, Lord. Hear our prayer and allow your love and compassion to lead us in your will. Lord, we pray deeply for discernment as we make our way forward as a church and a denomination. May this process be bathed in prayer and dedicated to following your will for this church. May everything that is said be in love and compassion, glorifying you. Merciful Lord, allow our lives to be a beacon of light. Not just talking about love, but demonstrating the love of Christ to a lost world. It's not by our own power, but by yours that allows us to stand firm in what we believe. Lord, may we move past timid service and be filled with the Spirit, making us bold as lions following the King of Kings. Showing love in the face of hostility and uncertainty. 
May they see your love in our lives, Lord Jesus. We ask this in your precious name, saying the prayer you taught us long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're having a little bit of a switch up in our schedule. Typically, we go to the children's moment at this time, but we're going to do the offering first, and then following that, we'll do the children's Bibles as a part of the children's message. The ushers will come forward this time. Precious, loving Father, take these gifts, tithes, and offerings, the fruit of our labor, to build your kingdom and change this world. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. We have a special opportunity now that we would like to present Bibles to our, our third graders and our three-year-olds, and Miss Laura Bowden is here to help with that, and Reverend Jim Creel is, is also here to assist, and we did our best to try to make sure we had a, a, a Bible for everyone, so we have a couple of extras in case there was someone that we didn't get a name for, uh, but we are, are very uh, pleased to present these Bibles this morning. Your 
quiet wicker? I gave your mom a Bible. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Day. Wow. Uh -huh. Those were all the names that we had for our third graders. Are there any more three year olds in here? That, that, oh, gosh. What's your name, honey? What's your name? You, yeah. Oh, I know who you are. I gave your dad a Bible. This is a banner day. It is very I special. I want, to, <laughs> I want to say a couple words about those Bibles. My sons, who are now 16 and 14 and 11, they each had a Bible like that. It was an older version of it, but that was very special to them. And we read those stories almost every night before we went to bed. And that's, in a big way, how my sons learned a lot of the Bible stories that they still remember today. And so I want to encourage you to take those Bibles, and, and if you open it up, there's really nice pictures in there that can help you learn those stories. And I want you to ask mom and dad or, or, or anyone who's, who's willing to read those stories with you so that you can learn them. And those stories are going to teach you about God and Jesus and how Jesus loves us and, and gave his life on the cross for us so that we could be forgiven of our sins and how God raised him from the dead. And those Bibles will encourage us to learn all that we can from Jesus and try to follow him. And so those, those are very, very important books that can really bless you and your family for a long, long time. Are you going to read them? Are you going to ask some uh, grown-ups to, 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 to help you learn from God's Word? All right. Let us pray, okay? Dear God, we thank you for your Holy Word and we thank you for the wonderful stories and all that your word teaches us. And Father, we thank you for children's Bibles and the pictures that illustrate your holy word. And please bless these children and their families, Father, that your word might truly live within their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're welcome. What a special morning for Miss Laura. Wow. <laughs> Okay, my third graders, I think this is year 24 for Miss Laura. <laughs> so excited, I had the little, the little second generations. Okay, uh, I'm going to try and do this in the alphabetical, not that it really matters. Um, Ethan Funston, where are you? Ethan? Here you go. Honey. Here you go. Stay That's your name in it. Stay up here with us, please. Stella Gunter. So we can Last but not least, prettiest usher of all, <laughs> Claire Sturzenbecker. All right. And you guys are receiving a little bit different Bible than our, our younger ones did just now. These Bibles, if you open them up, they have some little lessons in there and study helps, um, things that will help you to uh, encourage you to read and, and understand. They have introductions to the books of the Bible, and there's a dictionary in the back if there's some words you don't quite understand. And there's also an index. And if you want to read a verse about the cross or a verse about hope or forgiveness or joy, you can look those up in the index in the back of those Bibles, and it will lead you to some of those places. It will even give you the page number. And so those are very special Bibles, and uh, you guys are old enough to read them on your own, but sometimes it helps to have a grown-up read them with you. And we, we just hope these Bibles are very special to you. We hope there's something that you would be proud of and that you can put on your bedside table and, and leave there and open them up um, every day, if possible, to let God's Word speak to you, okay? Well, can I, can I say a prayer for you and, and you repeat after me, please? Dear God, we love you. Thank you for your holy word that's living and active. Thank you for what you teach us through your word. And please help us to be willing to open your word that you might continue teaching us and that we might know you better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are there any other 
third graders that need to receive a Bible forgot to call for that. We have some extras if, if, if anyone needs them. We're going to now dismiss uh, our children of age to go to Children's Church uh, for those that are going. And Miss Megan and Miss Laura, we thank you for your help today. All right. You can go back to your seats now. Let's everyone else take a hymn book, turn to hymn 399. Hymn 399. We'll sing verse 1. Be seated. We're going to read the scripture in just a few moments, so I'll invite you to stand at that time. Um, last week we started a sermon series that's loosely based on the book, The Christian Atheist. Can you believe a book's written by that, with that title, The Christian Atheist? The, the, the subtitle is a little more descriptive. It says, when you believe in God... But live as though he doesn't exist. In a sense, we become Christian atheists. We, we might believe one thing, but our lives might tell everyone else something, distant, uh, something different. Uh, the book is written by Pastor Craig Groeschel. He pastors Life Church in Oklahoma. Last week, we, we talked about when you believe in God but are ashamed of your past. Today, we're going to be talking about when you believe in God but still worry. Next week, we're going to be talking about when you believe in God, but pursue happiness and other things. And there's lots of chapters in the book. Uh, some of them with catchy titles are when you believe in God, but, but don't pray like you could. Or when you believe in God, but don't think he's fair. Or when you believe in God, but trust more in money. Or when you believe in God, but don't share your faith. This is a, a, a very good and challenging book, and I highly recommend it. And we're going to loosely base uh, our sermons on, on it. Uh, but when you believe in God, but are gripped by worry and anxiety, I hope today's message is going to be very practical and, and helpful for some of us. Do sometimes you find yourself gripped with, with stress and, and worry? Sometimes you, you, you have trouble sleeping because your mind is just racing from one thought to another. I can certainly identify with that. Do, do you, find, you ever find yourself not being fully present with your family and loved ones because your mind is on something else? Definitely happens to me. You know, sometimes we can feel just like this dark cloud of worry that just follows us and looms over our head and, and affects the way we think and, and the way we feel. And sometimes it can feel like this huge burden is on our shoulders, this huge weight on our chest that just weighs us down and, and makes life hard and much less enjoyable. You know, sometimes when I, when I allow worry to grip me, the, the muscles in my neck and, and upper back will just knot up. And it's hard to turn my head. You'll see myself stretching, <laughs> you know, trying to mas massage some of that stress and, and worry uh, that I carry in that part of my body. Sometimes uh, under long periods of stress, even ulcers will develop in my mouth, you know, and maybe you can identify with some of those things. Our English word for worry comes from an old German word, worgen, which literally means to strangle or to choke. Isn't that how worry can feel when you're really gripped 
at times. Uh, Worry can absolutely choke the life and the hope and the joy out of us. I looked uh, uh, online and and found on the Mayo Clinic's website, something that that isn't really a surprise, that episodes of worry can cause dramatic spikes in our blood pressure. Some of us can't even feel it uh, when it comes on. And, um, you know, every now and then this this isn't necessarily uh, detrimental to our health. But if it happens often, if these temporary spikes happen with some regularity, then they can do some damage to our blood vessels. Uh, they, can, they can cause damage to our heart and kidneys, just like chronic high blood pressure. And in addition, uh, people who are anxious or, or deal with stress a lot are sometimes more likely to engage in unhealthy habits that can also lead to higher blood pressure, such as smoking or drinking too much alcohol or overeating. Worrying is, is not good for us, and, and, and the Bible <laughs> uh, you know, addresses worry. I'm ashamed to admit that, but I have have worried more about the future of the United Methodist Church and the, uh, the 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 future of our congregation, the future of my career, and how it will affect my family. I've done more than my fair share of worrying and being consumed uh, with these challenges that we face in the life of our church. We have some major decisions that need to be made, which which will affect our church in big ways. And so I need this sermon probably more than anyone right now. And we all need to be calling on the Lord's help and direction as we discern the the, the future that God wants for our congregation. You know, although we believe in God, there's no doubt that I believe in God. But sometimes I struggle with trusting him. Sometimes I try to take matters too much into my own hands. I try to handle it myself. I try to think it through. I try to work it through. You know, I, 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 take, too, I take some of God's responsibility on myself and try to force things to happen instead of just doing my part and letting him handle the rest. And friends, when we let him handle his part, things always turn out better. That's good. Amen. <laughs> I wasn't even expecting that. <laughs> I'm hoping that as we leave this place today, some of what is shared will inspire us to trust him in spite of the, the stresses and the pressures that we feel. You know, and sometimes our, we bring stress on ourselves. Uh, sometimes um, we, we procrastinate or, or we, we make an irresponsible decision or we make a bad choice and we, we put ourselves in a situation that causes us to stress. And I want to address some of that today as well. And the, and the tough thing about worry is that it comes quite naturally to most of us. No one had to teach me to worry, you know, about things. I just kind of knew, knew instinctually how to, to do it. But, you know, and and, and the the issue is that because worry comes naturally to so many of us, it can be very difficult to overcome. And so that's why I want us to look into God's Word today to see what the Bible says about worrying and how Christians are called to manage their thoughts of fear and concern when they come to us. And I didn't realize how much the scripture had to say about worry. I'm only going to give you a a taste of of what I found this week. But I'm hoping that that these scriptures will empower us and and encourage us and reassure us uh, of some very important things about life and some very, very important things about God. Proverbs 12, 25 says that anxiety weighs down the human heart. Yeah, all of us already knew that. But, but the, looking a little deeper into uh, that verse, the phrase weighs down, it means more than, than just burdened or, or, or pressured. The, the, the phrase means to be, to be pushed down to the point of being forced to lay on the ground, unable to move. Worrying, severe worrying can have a paralyzing effect on us. But the Bible gives us hope that, that in the way that God seeks to work in those who worry. Psalm 94, 19 says, When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations are what cheers my soul. 
He didn't say, ease my mind. He didn't say, you know, less burden my, my heart. He says, they, they cheer my soul, the deepest, deepest part of who he is, that, that, that God ministers there. And, and that's, that's, that's what needs to be strengthened to, to treat the symptoms of worry in our lives. God brings hope and consolation that only he can bring to the soul uh, when we are burdened by anxious thoughts. And then I also want to read an extended passage from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. And if you're able, I invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is speaking to this crowd of, of people that, that have gathered to listen to Him on the mountain. And He says, Therefore I tell you, this is Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food in the body, more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you by worrying can add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon and all his glory was clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles, those who don't know the Lord, it is the Gentiles who seek uh, seek all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Friends, this is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus says tomorrow is going to bring plenty of worries, so, so there's no need to, to add to what tomorrow is already going to bring. The Bible acknowledges that, that worry is a difficult issue, but it also tells us not to worry. And over and over again, it seems to address our anxious thoughts and our innermost being. Why is God's word so adamant that we not worry? Especially when it comes so natural to so many of us. Because God knows that worrying is not good for us. God knows that worrying can hinder our relationship with God. It can eat away at our faith. And it can cause us to forget that God is good and that God is with us. We can allow fear and anxiety to displace God from the center of our hearts. And that's why God doesn't want us to worry, because God belongs there. And God is so much better for us than than the worry that we hold on to. And this this message isn't meant to make us feel guilty, you know, when, when we do worry and therefore give us another reason to worry about. This message is meant to encourage us To trust in the Lord the way Jesus was saying, hey, everywhere you look, you can see birds in the air. Everywhere you look, you can see grass on the ground and and lilies in the field. And your heavenly Father provides for them. And if your heavenly Father provides for them, then certainly your heavenly Father is going to provide for you. Philippians uh, 4, 6 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In other words, pray. (laughs) 
Talk to God. Pour out your hearts to God in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Present your requests to God. And so scripture, if we, if we take some of what Jesus said and some of what Paul writes and some of what we find in the Psalms, it's giving us a simple strategy for, for how to handle worry and stress. And, it, and it's so simple and so elementary that it, doesn't, it might not even seem very profound to you. But if we put these three steps in action in a regular, on a regular basis in our lives, then the peace of God is going to live within our hearts. And we'll have much more opportunity to do so if we follow these simple, these three simple steps. Number one, you may want to take some notes. <laughs> Number one is it's so basic, but, but remind yourself that God is good and that God is with you. That is that's so very important. When, when my mom was first diagnosed with cancer, I had to tell myself that. And I had to remind myself that life is tough, but God is good. Life has dealt me a hand that I don't want to have, but God is still there and he's still good and he's providing for me and he's providing for my mom and and my dad. God is good and God is there. And, And just like Jesus would say, just like God cares about the lilies and the birds, God cares so much more for you. And part of, 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 of reminding ourselves that God is good and that God is there is, is, is worshiping God on a regular basis and participating in a Sunday school class or an ongoing Bible study on a regular basis and, and reading God's Word, not only by ourselves, but with our families at home, particularly to our children. Our children need to be fed the Word of God because the world is going to teach them something different. And they need to know the truth of God before the world gets in their minds and starts corrupting and affecting the way they think and the way they view the world. And it's our responsibility as as Christians to to raise up our children, and not only the ones that live in our household, but the ones that God has entrusted to us within our church family. We have a responsibility to, to teach our children the truths of God. So that they can have a foundation on which to stand. And I'm so thankful that we, are, uh, we have a, a brand new youth director who is gung-ho about teaching our, our, our teenagers. And we have another uh, full-time staff person, Donna Cassidy, who's coming on um, in, in a month's time, a little less than a month's time, to be our full-time director of children's ministries. Uh, God is at work in this place. And God is leading us somewhere, and and it's our responsibility to stay in touch with God and to to stay with uh, God so we can get where God is is leading us. And part of that is is filling our hearts and minds with the good things from God's Word, nurturing our relationship with God so that we're better prepared to be God's people within the difficulties and challenges of life. So number one, remind yourself that God is good and that God is there. Number two, ask for God's help. It's so basic, but ask for God's help. Sometimes we we forget that and we rush straight into trying to figure it out. We We rush straight into trying to solve that problem. We rush straight into trying to fix things when the very first thing we should do is ask God to do it for us or God to do it through us or God to lead us. Through what is right, I was. Str- I had. I, I, I did a lot of really nice research for this sermon today, and even this morning, I had way too much material, and I was. I was stressed about what. What do I include, and what do I not, and how can I teach this later if I don't teach it today? And 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 the thoughts. I said, Joel, you're writing about it. Ask for God's help. God, lead me to what to keep, and God, lead me to what to save later. I was trying to fix it. I was trying to figure it out on my, on, my, on, my, on my own when I should have trusted God. But Paul writes in Philippians 4, 6, uh, in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the Bible says God is ever more ready to hear our prayers than we are to pray them. And so ask for God's help. You know, and we may not get exactly what we ask for, but God will provide and supply what we need. Number three, 
do what is wise and pleasing to God. We remind ourselves that God is good and that God is there. We ask for God's help. And we do what is wise and pleasing to God. Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things. If we're seeking God first, all these things that we worry about will be given to us. God gives us some responsibility in the equation. And we are charged to do what is right and pleasing to God. We are charged to seek first his kingdom. And in order to overcome some of the stress in our lives, we may need to change some of our habits. We may, we may need to make some adjustments. You know, if you're a student and you're worried about your grades, you may need to study more. You know, if, uh, if you're worried about your financial situation, then, then maybe you need to pay more attention to your budget and, and, and spend less. We've got to do what is wise and pleasing to the Lord. You may need to spend less time around certain people. You may need to stop going to certain places or certain websites. You may need to go to bed earlier. You may need to get up earlier or both. God gives us responsibility. And he's calling all of us to put God first in our lives instead of other things. And so we remind ourselves that God is good and that God is there. We ask for God's help and we do what is wise and pleasing to God. And this is a process that we work not just one time. And and, and working the process one time won't uh, make worry disappear overnight. But but a, a constant surrendering our fears and our anxieties to God through this process. Reminding ourselves that God is good. Asking for God to help and, and lead us through. And then doing our part. Taking responsibility for our actions. And, and striving to do what is wise and pleasing to God is a continual process. That will lead us to a much better place in life. And if we keep working that process, then then what Paul writes in Philippians 4, 7 will come true. And 4, 6, he tells us not to worry and to present our requests to God in everything. And then in verse 7, he writes, And then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we allow God to do what God can do, instead of trying to do God's job for Him, then the peace of God that is beyond anything that we could explain, uh, imagine, define, or even understand, will guard our hearts and our minds. You know, and Jesus reassures us as well. You know, he knows there's plenty of things that will cause us to worry. And he invites us in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You know, the Bible says not to worry. And so when we do worry, that is a sin because we're, we're doing something that the Word of God tells us not to do. But at the same time, you who are burdened by worry and fear and anxiety, when you're heavy burdened, what does Jesus ask us to do? He says, come to me. I'm a gentle and humble in spirit and, and I will give you rest for your souls. My yoke is easier and my burden is light. I just want you to come to me. You don't have to have it all figured out before you come. Just just come and and we'll sort it out together. You know, and we we remind ourselves of Psalm 46, 1, that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. That's a verse you might need to uh, to, to, to memorize if you haven't already. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help. In trouble. You know, um, we have all that we need to, to, to work through life because we have God and we have 24 7 access to the throne of God, and God invites us to come boldly to Him. And 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 continually offer and, and present our requests to Him. And God has promised never to forsake us. 
Our worry and our doubts and our sin may persist, but God's forgiveness and his presence and his goodness persists even more. Aren't we fortunate to be God's people? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we have the blessing of being able to sing hymn number 558 together, verses 1 and 2. We are the church. And let's stand and and sing with joy for God's glory. something. Uh, if you need some inspiration, uh, if, you, if you need a, a little assurance, or uh, if you need to smile again, then I want you to go online and pull up the anthem that the choir and, and, and Kim sang today and let that minister to you again. I, all of us were clapping and swaying and nodding our heads and, and my toe was tapping and it was just a joy to, to sing that. He has not failed me yet and he won't. If we hang in there with God, we're going to find, guess what, that he is hanging in there with us. And he never will leave us. He never will fail us. And he will always see us through. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let us go with the confidence of the children of God. Amen. Amen.